the table. A new poll showing, at least in the state of Florida, Marco Rubio now within single digits of Donald Trump. So, after the Puerto Rico win on the part of the uh, Florida senator, is he uh, sort of telegraphing something big to come? Hard to say, this much is not. A lot at stake. Hadley Heath Manning with how much? Now, these latest polls, you know, they could be anyone's guess. So I kind of had to, like you, try to look for trends. And I do see some narrowing of trends, but it's not always consistent. What do you see? Well, importantly, the upcoming primary in Florida is another one of those closed primaries. And I, ne I never thought we'd hear uh, as much this year as we've heard about open and closed primaries. But, of course, the trend so far has been that Mr. Trump doesn't perform as well in closed primaries where only Republican voters are allowed to vote. So keeping in mind when we look at the polling data that those who show up at the polls, those Republicans who can vote in Florida, ultimately, at the end of the day, the election's going to those who show up and vote. Weren't Kentucky and Louisiana closed, though? Yes, they were. So it's a, it's a trend overall where we've seen Cruz, for example, win in more closed primary states and others uh, like Marco Rubio have a fighting chance in those states. Open primary states have really been where Trump has taken the largest. Yeah, but, I mean, you could argue that's a closed state and Trump did well in both of those. I mean, he, he'll be, he will argue I, I've got the base with me. I've got wider groups with me. And if, 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 if the weather remains good in places like Michigan and elsewhere, uh, that will only further bring out the troops of all political stripes for him. Uh, what do you think? Well, we look at Florida coming up, and, and we have to break down this state. It's a little bit different. It doesn't really fit into one of the categories. It's not like the other southeastern states. It has a much higher Hispanic population, for example. About 20 percent of Floridians are Hispanic, and about one million voters in the state of Florida are Puerto Rican. We look at the Puerto Rican primary where Marco Rubio didn't just win, but he won overwhelmingly yeah, with 74% of the vote in the Puerto Rican primary. Uh, this is certainly showing us, making a statement about maybe some of the direction that Latino American voters are going to be leaning in the state of Florida. Yeah, you know, I, I stupidly was talking, we were covering this on Fox Business, which had, if you don't get, you really should demand. But, but one of the things I noticed is that why is he spending all this time in Puerto Rico? I knew about the primary, but then I didn't think, as you just reviewed, that it, it could be the wind at his back going into Florida. That's right. So about one million uh, people in the state of Florida are of Puerto Rican descent and, and may be eligible to vote in the Republican primary coming up soon. That's part of what's happening in the state of Florida. But of course, uh, Marco Rubio's rivals will point out that winning in Puerto Rico, Puerto Ricans can vote in a primary and they mm -hmm. just have. They're not eligible to vote in the general election. And his only other victory, of course, is a caucus in the state of Minnesota. So this certainly doesn't mean that he's doing as well as some of the other candidates. He has a lot to overcome after right. this past Saturday. But this might be the moment to heading into the Florida primary that Rubio might need. I don't see any of them quitting, though. Do you? Any of these candidates? No, and, and they've all sworn to yeah. stay in until the very end. So it doesn't look like any of them have a, a need in terms of a financial need to, to stop before the convention this summer. All right. Uh, Hadley Heath Manning, thank you very, very much.